Thank you, Ms. Chaya, for a very kind introduction, and Excellencies, distinguished participants. My name is Tetsuya Kimura, Ambassador Social, Economic, and UN Management Affairs Panel Mission of Japan to the UN in New York. I'm honored to make the presentation today on behalf of all our partners, in particular, the co-lead country, Colombia, and our Vice Minister for Education, Mr. Yoshimoto is with us in this room to listen to the important discussion today. This action track comprises three key sub-themes. First, foundational learning. Two, skills for employment and entrepreneurship. Three, education for sustainable development, ESD. The action track two is co-led by two member states, Colombia and Japan, the UN support team has been set up with UNESCO as the anchor agency and ILO as the alternative. And along with UNFCC, UNICEF, UNEP, UNECE, UNITA. We also have as our stakeholder colleagues World Skills International and UNGO, as well as 260 plus stakeholder organizations involved in the process. Action Track 2 reflects on these questions and how to empower learners for well-being, future of work, and planetary sustainability by mainstreaming education for sustainable development. We have three key questions. First, what elements are critical to transform education? Second, what are key policy intervention practices? And how can we strengthen international cooperation? To address these questions, we held three consultations, one with member states and two stakeholder consultations. We received extensive written feedback. The final draft is to be submitted only on July 15, including feedback from this pre-summit to inform key elements for the UN Secretary General's call for action during the test summit this September. It is important for education to reflect current context and challenges. For example, the existential threat of climate change, mass loss of biodiversity, natural disasters, pandemics, extreme poverty and inequalities, rapid technological change, and violent conflicts, among others. These challenges disproportionately affect vulnerable populations, exacerbating already existing inequalities and suffering. For example, it is estimated that in 2020, more than 770 million people still lacked basic literacy skills, two-thirds of whom were women. Nearly half of 100 countries reviewed by UNESCO had no mention of climate change in their national curriculum frameworks, although young people are frightened about their future due to the climate crisis. In addition, the world of work is rapidly changing and unemployment and inactivity are affecting youth in particular. Reskilling and upskilling will be vital to take up opportunities such as 85 million additional jobs that are expected to be created by 2030 in green transition. So, what is the role of education in addressing these challenges? Let us reflect on what the fundamental purpose of education is. First, the question of empowering learners for human and planetary sustainability reminds us that ultimate purpose of education is to prepare us for life. Second, education is about balancing learning to be and learning to live together with our current preoccupation on learning to know and learning to do. Third, the 2030 Agenda also makes calls for integrated approach to development to leave no one behind. Lastly, efforts must be made to ensure that curricula and pedagogies support knowledge, skills, values, and actions for just and sustainable economies and societies, including environmental and climate action by mainstreaming ESD. So, what should transforming education look like? Our approach is to focus on in individuals as agents of change. That is a human-centered approach. 
To advance SDGs in every corner of societies, a whole society approach is also critical. We also recognize that the twin transitions towards digital and green economies will result in job losses and uncertainty for a segment of the workforce, as well as the creation of new opportunities. In order to achieve this transformation, there are key policy interventions, game changers, and practices. As you can see, there are five elements. First, robust lifelong learning. Second, promotion of a whole institutional approach. Third, evolving skill demands in changing economies and transition to green and digital economies. Fourth, ensuring inclusion, equity, and justice. And lastly, stronger governance and financing. These are key factors to empower learners for well-being, future work, and planetary sustainability. We regard Education for Sustainable Development, ESD, as a cross-cutting perspective to address those five elements in this action track. Here, we showcase some examples of the good practices around these elements from various countries around the world. In Japan, ESD is mainstreamed for all levels of education from preschool to upper secondary. This direct contributes to national initiative for ESD for 2030. Under building and implementing robust lifelong learning policy and systems, we have examples of the academic credit bank and personal learning accounts in the Republic of Korea and France. We also have the School for Street Working Children's Project in Afghanistan, which offers street working children opportunities for inclusive foundational education. Lastly, how we can strengthen key policy interventions building on existing regional and global partnerships is a critical question. Here on the slide are some examples of initiatives, coalition networks, and platforms that promote learning skills for life, work, and sustainable development. They are categorized by using different colors in accordance with the sub-theme of Action Track 2. Most of these global initiatives and partnerships cut across the sub-themes. I will only highlight two of them. First is the global UNEFOC network, which consists of institutions specialized in technical and vocational education and training. It provides an environment for exchange, cooperation, and mutual assistance for its member UNEFOC centers. The second is ESDNet 2030, which is a new global network that aims to implement the ESD for 2030 framework and its roadmap by providing a platform and of exchange and collaboration of member states and stakeholders through the country initiative. And here we make key recommendations along these elements. For example, we call for implementation of ESD for 2030 framework and roadmap, which is the guide for countries on mainstreaming ESD and for whole school approach to learning emphasizing the need to focus on institutional innovation and linkage to industry, as well as capacity building for teachers. Member states should support each other in their implementation by strengthening global networks. We recommend that to meet skills demands in changing economies, we need to monitor socioeconomic trends to understand skills demands by each sector including emerging ones such as green skills, and emphasizing at, and emphasize the importance of recognition of prior learning and the recognition of different knowledge systems. We should invest more in people. We also recommend ensuring that learning needs of all individuals are met with attention to the disadvantaged, including persons with disabilities, refugees and displaced people, those living in rural or remote areas, people from linguistic minorities and elderly. And finally, to realize this, we recommend leveraging existing networks, 
global instrument frameworks to mobilize additional resources and expertise to support policy development and implementation. Synergies among global instruments should be strengthened by sharing clear targets and strategies. I hope this presentation has shed some light on the key aspect of transforming education and hope it helped inspire our discussion today. Thank you very much.